Thanks very much indeed, Ian. So I turn to our next speaker, Dr. David Toke. David is reader in energy politics at the Department of Politics and International Relations at the University of Aberdeen. He was an early mover in pressing for a non-nuclear response to climate change in his book, Green Energy, and it was his work which paved the way for feed-in tariffs in 2008. Welcome, David. It was a small cog in the wheel for the feed-in tariff campaign. I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain. I was, uh, there were other people who played a very large part, including Alan Simpson, people like that particularly, did... Uh, was more um, instrumental than me. Anyway, I'm um, going to talk about the relative costs of renewable energy and nuclear power and say a little bit about how we can move forward on the renewables agenda. And I must pass comment that um, Ian, Fa Ian Fairley is to be greatly congratulated for organising this conference and he is including um, choosing the incredibly prescient timing of this conference just after the general election. This is a brilliant stroke of genius. <laughs> and hopefully we can move forward um, building on the politics of hope agenda so that we can mobilize the young people in this country for the sorts of things that they want looking at the opinion surveys which is more renewable power and against the thing the priorities that they, they are least concerned with which is uh, nuclear power of course here of course in this audience the age range is a little bit elevated but but we are still a beacon of, of hope even though we are deviant amongst our age group, but long live this particular type of deviance. <laughs> Here is an easy chart comparing some published, this is contract prices, this is real prices that are being offered to people in terms of power purchase agreements recently in the last year, 18 months or so, compared with the Hinckley C contract, and we can see all of them are significantly going to be built for being paid significantly lower prices for their electricity compared to uh, Hinckley C nuclear power stations uh, contract measured in um, 2016 prices, and these include grid connection costs. And as you see, it in Denmark, Germany, well, I haven't got a Danish price here, but Netherlands, Germany, for solar and offshore wind power, and also the most recent onshore wind power schemes have been put up for much, much, much cheaper prices than Hinckley C in terms of money that's actually going to be paid out by consumers. And of course, the prices of renewable energy are still dropping very quickly, whereas nuclear power prices, costs are going up, the amount we actually have to pay people to produce the nuclear power is going up. Why is it going up? Quite simply because nuclear power is unsafe and people and regulators demand ever increased safety standards, which push up, push up pushes up the costs of nuclear power to build them, never mind the back-end costs and so on, which Andy Blowers is going to be talking about. So they are a, an economic disaster, disaster area, black hole. And this is before you've even started building them, because Things can only get worse once you start building these things and become more and more expensive. And I wouldn't be surprised if Hinckley carries on being seriously built that there'll be some crisis and agreement between the French and British government to pour further money down this black hole on top of the, what's already been agreed. And of course, we have this bizarre spectacle of the French government actually 
putting billions of euros into building a nuclear power station in the UK. That's on top of all the money we're going to be paid for this, for this project. And, of course, it would only be built because EDF is a state-owned body. And this is the only way you're going to get nuclear power stations built now where they're bankrolled and given state guarantees to pay whatever it costs to get them built. The last company that was trying to do this at least partially under its own guarantees, uh, Westinghouse, owned by Toshiba, has recently gone spectacularly bankrupt because of the problems with building American nuclear power stations. And this is happening throughout the West now. You can't really build nuclear power stations except at incredible costs and with state um, forcing electricity consumers to, uh, to shell out increasingly large amounts of money simply because Western safety regulations are just too difficult to meet for nuclear power and the result is massively increasing costs. And the pressures even are on China to increase its safety requirements that's likely to make Chinese reactors in China much more expensive, uh, not to mention Chinese nuclear power stations built in this country. Of course, they have to meet British regulations, which are, of course, very robust, as we know, but no, seriously. <laughs> Certainly up to a point. But of course, as we've seen by these pr prices, renewable energy is much cheaper as it does not need such state guarantees. It's built by private companies, of course. Now, how do we integrate things? Now, we have a battle on now between the big companies who want to balance the increasing penetration of renewable, variable renewable energy sources, wind power and solar power mainly, um, between the big companies and the rest, the pro-renewables people, because the big companies want to do it most expensively. What we need to do is to balance out the variation in demand and supply, as you see here, so it becomes much more flatter but of course, the main electricity companies don't want this because what they want to do is to solve the alleged problem or just change the system really by building more centralized power stations and building more wires. That's their idea of solving the problem. We need flexible, decentralized energy in a flexible, decentralized system. So that's what they want, centralized power plant and bigger distribution and, tran and transmission wires. What we need, a decentralized model, we need smart grid charging. That's not these, um, uh, 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 not these so-called smart meters uh, being put in. Well, they're meters, they don't actually do anything particularly useful, that's the point. Uh, we need a system whereby we can balance renewables properly. Um, it's all a much, much cheaper way of doing things. You don't need all these centralized power plants and you don't need all these extra wires built. It's obviously cheaper, um, but the electricity suppliers, of course, are doing next to nothing about implementing this system. Um, so. We need proper regulation, or at least not regulation that suits the current centralized power system. Um, supply composition, at least in the domestic sector, is bogus. It works up to a point in the um, industrial commercial sector. But in the domestic sector, it's always been a joke because there's just too many customers. I mean, I'm, uh, we should be talking about um, regulation, um, so that you wouldn't abolish competition, but you have prices regulated in the uh, domestic sector, and you can still have people com competing to provide energy efficiency. Um, 
so that people could, uh, suppliers could, prov uh, could compete to uh, lower people's energy um, uh, consumption and instead have energy efficient fridges or what have you and consume electricity at the right time. But we need something imagination like we have with in the wa in water where new customers uh, go on to systems where you have time of day charging and uh, people encouraged to move to that sort of thing. Um, anyway, there's not enough time to go into all that so sort of thing, but we need a, a systemic change to a decentralized system that's oriented towards uh, where it is competitive, towards competing to provide energy efficiency, not this bogus supply price, which three quarters of people don't compete for anyway, uh, and the electricity supply is just just play, play games about. Um, and the costs need to be assessed on a whole system basis, not broken up into this, um, uh, into various little bits where each section claims it's being competitive and it's not, because the whole, the whole system, as we know, we need a holistic approach. We certainly do need one in, uh, as far as the electricity system is concerned, so that we get costs based, based on what matters best to the whole of the system, not individual little bits, which is all the regulation does at the moment. Of course, we need a proper renewables target. Now, neither Labour or Conservative has a renewable energy target. Um, we've been fooled in this country to just needing a carbon reduction target, which is, of course, very important. But governments are able to play this game of trading off, playing off renewables against nuclear. They say we're having lots of nuclear power stations built to meet this carbon reduction target, but of course we're not. Uh, and so that they can avoid the need to develop renewable energy. Yes, we need a carbon reduction target, but the, what isn't provided towards the carbon reduction target or renewable energy needs to be provided by energy efficiency, not this bogus fantasy nuclear power program that we've got at the moment. That's what we ought to be pressing, and in particular, um, now, Labour's policy, I mean, taken literally, wasn't actually too bad because they, they said that sure 60% of the UK's energy comes from zero carbon or renewable energy sources. As so we know, we don't have any zero carbon um, energy sources, so that meant that it would all come from renewable energy, strictly speaking. But of course, it was rather confused. Uh, we need a 60% carbon reduction target, but um, uh, on, by 2030, on the way to achieving the, um, uh, the legally set 80% carbon reduction target by 2050, but we need a specific renewable energy target, and one is actually provided by the European Union. And if we're going to be in the single market in some form, then we should be mentioning this, particularly, particularly in the greed movement and in the labour movement. We should be. Uh, uh, and there is an EU renewables target, 20% of, of all energy from renewables by 2030. So let's push that one, please. Um, uh, push it in the Green Movement and the Labour Party. Get the Labour Party to adopt that. That's going to be the next government, isn't it? Hopefully in the not too distant future, led by our gl glorious leader, Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> Let's get them to adopt a, a, a good renewables target, and why not the EU renewables target? Um, so, I, I, to finish off a conclusion, back the renewables energy target. We want regulate electricity to build flexible demand response systems and encourage energy efficiency and encourage decentralized energy. That'll produce a truly strong and stable electricity system, as opposed to the weak and unsafe one that we've got at the moment. Thanks very much indeed, David. That's fantastic. Um, our third speaker is Professor Tim Musso.